uh, section 11.2 talks about odds. So it's probably a term that you've probably heard before, but let's go ahead and make sure that we understand the, uh, the idea or the concept behind odds, okay? So first thing we're going to talk about is something called the odds against an event, okay? So the odds against an event is going to be equal to the probability that the event fails to occur divided by the probability that the event does occur or the probability of failure divided by the probability of success. Okay, so let's take a look at the first problem. It says, determine the odds against rolling a four on, roll, on one roll of a fair die. Okay, so we're going to go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is the probability that we fail to roll a four divided by the probability that we successfully roll a four. Okay, so there's only one four here, right? So the probability that we're going to fail is out of those six numbers, we get the other five, okay? The probability that we succeed is one out of the six, okay? So guys, if we notice, this is uh, like a pretty complex fraction because we have a fraction in our numerator and a fraction in our denominator. But if you remember, a fraction just means we're dividing. So really all I'm doing is I'm saying, what is 5 over 6 divided by 1 over 6? Okay. Remember how we divide fractions? We multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So those are going to cancel. We end up with 5 over 1. Now, guys, the way we write odds is like this. 5 to 1, a lot of times in the homework, it'll be written like this. And let me kind of explain what I mean by that. When you're doing your homework, it's going to have two little boxes here, okay? And all you're going to do is in the first box, you'll put the number 5. In the second box, you'll put the number 1. Or it'll have a box here, and then it'll have the word 2. And again, in the first box, you'll put a 5. In the second box, you'll put a 1. Okay. <clears throat> now, there's a little bit more of a simplified version. It says the odds against the event is the number of outcomes unfavorable to E, okay, to that particular event, divided by the number of outcomes that are favorable to E. I want you to look at this part right here. The number of outcomes unfavorable to rolling a four. So how many of these numbers were not a four? There were five of them. Uh, how many of the numbers were a four? There was one of them, okay? That's the other way we can do that. Guys, another quick thing to point out, if I add these two numbers together, that gives me my total number of outcomes, okay? There's a total of six outcomes. When I roll a die, there's six sides. All right, let's do the same thing for the next piece here, and let's see if we can figure this out. It says the circle graph. There it is. Shows the U.S. smartphone ownership in 2014. If a smartphone owner is randomly selected, determine the odds against the individual owning a Samsung phone. Okay, so the odds against owning a Samsung phone. Okay. So look what it says. The number of outcomes that are unfavorable to that divided by the number of outcomes that are favorable to that. Okay, well, if we know that 27% are favorable, are going to give me the Samsung, that number 27 is going to be on the bottom. Guys, all the other numbers... If I add them all up, it should be whatever 100 minus 27 is. So if I grab my calculator right here, turn this thing on, what's 100 minus 27? Let's see, that's 73. Okay, So 73 to 27. Okay. Let's take a look at the next part here. So now... We're talking about the odds in favor 
of an event. Okay, so it says the, uh, the following formula can be used to determine the odds in favor of an event. The probability that the event occurs divided by the probability that it does not occur, or the probability of success divided by the probability of failure. So this is the, the reciprocal of the one we just did before. Okay, so let's take a look at part A. Part A says the odds in favor of selecting a queen. Okay, oops, let me get this going again. Why is it not wanting to work? Let's see, let's try that one more time. Okay, so the probability that we get a queen divided by the probability that we don't get a queen. Okay, so let me come back over here. Okay, so the probability that we're going to get a queen. So guys, if I look at you know, we're going to say there's 4 out of 52, right? But again, I can look at it in one row. This will be my reduced version. The probability I'm going to get a queen is going to be 1 out of those 13 cards. Okay, so let me come back over here. Probably I'm going to get a queen is 1 out of the 13. What's the probability that I don't get a queen will be 12 out of 13. Okay. We're going to do like we did before. We're really just dividing two fractions, 1 out of 13 divided by 12 out of 13. So this is going to be 1 out of 13 times 13 over 12. These 13s will cancel. Like I said before, guys, it's going to give it to us in a little box kind of setting. And so this number is going to be my first number, and that'll be my second. Okay. Now, look at part B. Part B says the odds against selecting a queen. Remember we said that this here was just the reciprocal, let me see if we can scroll back up, of this part right there. So now, if we want to figure out, well, what are the odds against selecting a queen? Oops. Okay. So the odds against selecting a queen, if this is 1 to 12, then this one here should be 12 to 1. Okay. So again, if we look at the next part, the next little piece of the formula that we have here, let's take a look. It says... The number of outcomes favorable divided by the number of outcomes that are unfavorable. Notice that's going to be the reciprocal of what we have right over here, right? Okay. So, <clears throat> look what it says. It says the odds against Robin, this is against, okay, being admitted to the College of Her Choice are 9 to 2. Uh, determine the probability that Robin is admitted and the probability that she's not admitted. Okay. So we're going to go like this. The odds against is going to be the number of outcomes unfavorable to the number, oops, come on. Oh, why is this not working again? There we go. The number of outcomes that are favorable. Okay? So look what it says that they are 9 to 2. So this is my 9, this is my 2. Okay? Now remember we said earlier that if we take those two numbers and we add them up, that's going to give us the total number of outcomes. Okay? So there's a total of 11, okay? Now, part A says, what's the probability that she's admitted? That means those are favorable. Well, there's two out of the total of 11, okay? Part B says, what's the probability that she's not admitted? Well, the ones that are not admitted are going to be our unfavorable. So there's our 9 out of 11, okay? All right, I'm going to keep scrolling down to the next part here. And again, let's just read through the problem carefully. See if we can't figure it out. Oh, come on. There we 
go. Okay, so liberal arts students, it says in a class of 30 students, 18 are liberal arts majors. Okay, so part A says, what's the probability the student is majoring in liberal arts? So the probability that they're getting a liberal arts degree is 18 out of the 30. Uh, I think we can divide them both by 6. So 6 goes into 18 three times, 6 goes into 35. There's our answer for part A. Okay, so part B says, what's the probability that they're not majoring in liberal arts? Well, let's think about this for a minute, right? If 18 are, then how many wouldn't? Well, there's a total of 30. 30 minus 18 would be 12. And these are not liberal arts students, okay? So it's going to be 12 out of the 30. We can divide them both by 6. So 6 goes into 12 twice. 6 goes into 35 times. Guys, we could have used that same idea here that we're using in 11.1. .1. If 3 out of the 5 are majoring in liberal arts, how many are not? Well, the other 2, right? Now, part C. Okay. The odds against. Okay. So the odds against. The number that are not majoring in liberal arts is 2. The number that are majoring in liberal arts is 3. So odds against is going to be unfavorable to favorable. Okay. And then part D, the odds in favor will just be the other way around, right? The number that are favorable, well, how many are? Three. How many are not? Two. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Let's take a look here. Uh, so it says, toss a die. It says, in exercises 11 through 14, a fair die is tossed. Determine the odds against rolling. Okay, against. So let's do this. We're going to go one... Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So for number 11, the odds against rolling a five. Okay. How many of the numbers here are not five? Five of them. Look, one, two, three, four, and six. So five to one. Okay. Number 12. The odds against an odd number. Okay, so how many of those numbers up there are not odd? Those are not odd, right? The ones that we circled, those are not odd. How many are there? Three. To the ones that are odd, how many are odd? Three. Okay, so guys, when we get something like this, we're in essence, think about this as a fraction. What we're going to do is we're going to reduce those two numbers, okay? So the way we're going to reduce them is if we can divide them by the same thing, then we'll go ahead and do that. So we can divide them both by 3, so we'll get 1 to 1, okay? Number 13. So let me take away those circles and those little lines, okay? So number 13, a number less than 5. Okay, so we want to figure out how many numbers are not less than 5, okay? How many numbers are not less than 5? Uh, let's see. Those two numbers are not less than 5, right? 5 is not smaller than itself, and 6 is not smaller than itself. So 2, 2, how many are? Those right there, 2 to 4. Guys, just like we did before, I can reduce those two numbers... We can divide them both by 2. That's going to give me 1 to 2. Okay. And then, let's see. Uh, number 14, a number greater than 4. Okay, so but remember, we're still looking at the odds against, right? So how many numbers up here are not greater than 4? Well, the numbers that are not greater than 4... There are four of them. Okay. How many numbers are greater than four? There are two of them. Okay. Guys, just like we did before, we can divide them both by two. That's going to give me two to one. Okay. 
All right. So let's keep moving on over here. See if we can at least figure out the first part. Okay, so we won't do actually all of them. Well, you know what? We can do them all. It actually won't take very long. I actually think this is a good problem because it's visual. We can see it. I think it'll make a whole lot of sense. Look what it says. Determine the odds against it landing on red. Okay? So the odds against it landing on red. So, guys, so we're going to do this. The number of no reds to the number of reds, okay? So just like we did on that problem earlier, I have to think of each one of these circles as cut up into equal pieces, okay? So <clears throat> let's do number 19. How many pieces are not red? Two of them. How many pieces are red? Two of them. Again, we can reduce them, divide them both by two. We're going to get one to one. Let's do number 20. How many of these are going to be no reds? Two of them. Okay. How many are reds? One of them. Okay. Let's do number 21. Okay, so guys, I'm going to do the same thing. I need to make sure that my circle is cut up into equal pieces. There we go. Now we have, it looks like eight equal pieces, right? Okay. Let's figure out, <clears throat> excuse me, how many pieces are not red? So one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Five are not red. How many are? Three. Okay. And the same thing for number 22. No reds. How many are not reds? One, two, three, four, five. How many are reds? Three. Okay. And these are odds against reds, right? Guys, if the directions would have said, uh, let's do this. Instead of against, if it would have said in favor, then this would have been the number I would have been writing first, and that would have been the number I'm writing second. Okay. Let me scroll a little bit to the next part here. Okay, let's take a look. So we have our billiard table here, billiards, right, pool. It says if one ball is selected at random, determine the odds against it containing a stripe. Okay, so again, the way we're going to do this, we're going to put the number of no stripes first. Two the number of those that have the stripe. All right, so no stripes. So let me count them. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight don't have a stripe, okay? How many do have a stripe? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of them do have a stripe. All right, give me one quick second. All right. So for the next problem here, it says if one ball is selected at random. Okay, if one ball is selected at random. Let's see. Uh, determine the odds in favor of it being something other than the eight ball. So we don't want to get an eight. So we want this in favor of, right? So the number of no eight ball to the number of those that have the eight ball, okay? Well, I think when we counted them to earlier, right, if I add those numbers up, there's 15. So how many of them do not have the eight ball? 14. How many of them do have the eight ball? One, right? This is supposed to be number, not no number eight, right? Okay, and let's see. There's another one here, and it says, if a ball is selected at random, determine the odds in favor of it being an even. So we're going to say, let's take the number, oops, let me use a little number sign, the number of evens to the ones that aren't even, well, if they're not evens, then they'll have to be odd, okay? So let me just kind of do this again. Let's see if we can figure out how many of them are even. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. 
So there are seven even number balls. Then there has to be eight that are not even, right? All right. Okay, let's take a look here. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, how many players do we have? We have Kobe, rest in peace, Kobe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have ten of them, okay? So it says if one of the players is listed in the chart is selected at random, determine the probability that the player earned more than 23 million, okay? More than 23 million. So we know we have a total of 10 players, okay? We want to know how many of those 10 have more than 23 million. It looks like those three do, right? So three out of 10. All right, the next part says the odds against the player earning more than 23 million. So the odd, the number of unfavorable to the number of favorable, okay? Well, we're, when we say favorable, we're talking about those that earn more than 23 million. Well, we know how many earn more than 23 million. There are three of them. How many don't? Those seven, right? And that's what we mean by the odds against. Okay. All right. Uh, let's take a look at the next one here, medical tests. It says the results of a medical test show that of the 85 people selected at random who were given the test, 80 tested negative, 5 tested positive. Okay, it says determine the odds against against a person selected at random of these 85 uh, testing negative on the test. Okay, so go like this. Number of unfavorable to the number of Favorable, okay? So unfavorable, what do we mean by that? Unfavorable, against them testing negative. So what's the, if we don't want them to be negative, we want them to be what? Positive. So how many were positive? Five. How many were favorable, meaning how many were negative? 80 were negative, okay? Guys, just like we did earlier, we can divide them both by five, so that's going to give me one to 16. All right, let's take a look. See here at this next one, it says the odds in favor of Wendy winning an election are seven to four. Okay, the number of favorable to the number of unfavorable. Okay, favorable means that she is going to win. So this is my seven. Unfavorable, this is my four. So guys, now we're looking for probability. So remember, the probability, first thing we gotta do, what are the total number of outcomes? We're gonna add those together, that's gonna be 11, okay? So again, this is gonna be the wins, these are gonna be the losses, okay? So part A says, what's the probability that she is going to win? Well, there's seven out of the 11, uh, what is she not going to win? So we could say lose, but I guess she could tie, right? Then it'll be 4 out of the 11. Okay. All righty, I'm going to keep scrolling down over here. And I think this is our last problem here out of 11.2. Uh, let me see if I can. Here we go. Let me just inch up a bit. Okay, so it says... Uh, the exercises in 49 through 50, uh, the following circle graph shows the percent of Americans with various types of blood, okay? So if we were to add up all those numbers, we're going to come up with 100, right? Because it's a perfect pie chart. All right, so let's do number 45. Okay, number 45 says, what's the probability that the person has A plus blood? So we could actually just go like this. The probability that it's A positive, right? would just be 0.34 because it's 34%, okay, 46. 
uh, that they have B negative blood. What's the probability that they have B negative blood? B negative is right here, 2%, which would be 0 0.02. Okay. 47 is the odds against them having A positive, okay? Against them having A positive. So I'm going to go like this, okay? If it's going to be against, then the A positive is going to be the second number, and then the not A positive will be the first number. Well, we know that there are 34 people who have A positive, okay? How many don't? Uh, 100 minus 34 should give us, I want to say it's 66, but let's, oops, let's double check. So turn it on, 100 minus 34. Uh, yes, it is, 66, right? Okay. All right, now we can divide them, say, both by 2. And so let's see, half of 66 is 33. Half of 34 is 17. And I think we'll stop right there. Okay. 48. The odds in favor of them having B negative. Okay, so the odds in favor, this is going to be our B negative. And this is going to be not B negative. Okay, so B negative, we know we had two. How many don't? 98. All right. Again, if we reduce those two numbers, we can divide them both by two. That's going to give us 1 to 49. Okay. And then problem number, oops, problem number 49 says the odds in favor of them having either O positive or O negative. This is in favor. Okay, so we're going to put our O positive and our O negatives here. And then these are going to be the not O positive, O negative. So let's see, O positive is 37, O negative is 6. Add those together, that's going to give me 43. So then this one here would be 47. And do we have a 50 here? I guess that's where we stop, right? Yeah, that's where we stop. All right, so anyway, 11.2. Hope it's okay. Let me know if you got questions.